These are the four-speed automatic transmissions that were used in almost every Mercedes passenger car from the early 1980s up to the mid-1990s. That's 15 years and millions of transmissions later. This is what is referred to as a 722.3 transmission. And this one here is the 722.4. And if you look at them, they look similar. But the closer you look, the more you realize this one's a little bit bigger. You know, the dimensions are the same. The bell housings, as they apply to a specific engine, are the same. But there's a lot of differences. And what I've noticed on the internet is there's a lot of confusion about the differences about swapping why they made the 722.4 because it came later. So in this video, I wanna to try to dispel some of the confusion and show you the key differences and explain what you may run into if you think you're gonna swap one of these for the other one. The 722.3 came first. It showed up in the US market in 1981 in the W126 and in the 300 TD turbo diesel wagon. The 722.4 was developed a few years later and there is a question as why do they do this? Why did they come up with a smaller transmission? Well, this was developed primarily for the 190E which was launched in the US market in 1984, referred to as the baby Benz. And I think the engineers decided they needed a smaller, lighter transmission. Yes, lighter. This transmission here is almost 50 pounds lighter than the 722.3. So the 722.4 was a smaller, lighter transmission that could go in the 190E with the four cylinder. I'm not sure why, but they also installed the 722.4 in the 300 TD wagons, California models in 1985. And this is what this one came out of. If you've read about this transmission, you've probably heard that it was developed to go behind any engine with a displacement of 2.6 liters or less. Well, that's not necessarily true because they put this behind a 3.0 liter diesel. Now the 722.3 was mounted behind all the V8s and the W126s and the early turbo diesel models. So other than weight, and size of the housing, what are the key differences anyway? Looking at the front, you can see that the bell housing where it mounts up to the engine is the same on both these transmissions. This is the point three, this is the point four, but look inside. Look at the size of the input shafts and look at the holes where the pump and reverse piston assembly is mounted. You can see the point four, the shaft is smaller, the hole is a little bit smaller in diameter. And if you look at these two assemblies here, I mean, even when I pick them up like this, you see, I, I, this one is so much heavier. You can see the difference. They look the same, they function the same, it's just smaller, lighter, and that's pretty much it throughout the inside of these transmissions. Obviously, the only way you're going to save weight is to cut everything down in size. Moving to the right side of these two transmissions, I want to show you some subtle differences in these pistons. You know, this here is the B1 and this is the B2. And at first glance, they look real similar, but they're smaller in diameter. You would think that, oh man, the B2 is gonna work in both transmissions. Well, it's not. You have to have a specific B2 piston just for the point four. And the same with the B1. The springs are a little bit bigger and the diameter of the cover, I think you can see this right here. Look at the difference. Very subtle, probably a weight savings of a few ounces there, but I think where most of the weight was saved is in the planetary gear assembly inside the transmission. So I'm gonna pull these two out and I think we'll have a little fun. If I can find a scale, we'll weigh them. Before I pull these cores out of these two transmissions, I thought I'd show you the differences here at the tail end. You can see right away the difference in the covers. This is the point three, this is the point four. <laughs> you're looking at smaller and lighter look at the pickups for the speedometer and even 
The drive gear for the speedometer in the 0.4 transmission is made out of plastic rather than steel, okay? There's a couple other differences I found in this 0.4 transmission. It looks like there's a difference also in the governors. If you look at this governor, it has a steel gear and this one in here has plastic. So we're talking about a pound here, a few ounces there, here a little, there a little. I guess it all adds up. But there's one thing on this transmission that I have to warn you is going to be a real pain if you don't have the right tool. And I think I'll just quickly show you that now. If you've watched any of my other videos on the 722.3 transmission, I've discussed the challenge of getting this snap ring on and off uh, without a special tool. This is the tool I've created here. I mean, this is really a pain. And this one, say, if you don't have this for the 722.4, there's two of these. This one goes way down in there like this, way down in there. And then this plastic drive gear goes on and then you have the second clip. So on the 722.4, getting this clip off that's way, way down in here is going to be a real challenge without my special tool or a tool very similar to this. This could be an eye opener to some of you who have not seen the inside of these transmissions. But look, look at the difference in these cores. You can see that everything is similar. The functions are the same. You know, the K1, the K2, the brake bands, but everything is smaller in the 0.4 transmission here. Were they after just weight? I think it was a combination of weight and size because they were going to put these into the lower displacement, smaller vehicles that they had coming online, including the W201 and the W202. If you've worked on these transmissions, you probably already know when you try to lift this out of a 722.3, you can really feel it. This is approaching 60 pounds. The one in the 0.4, you know, it's, it's not that much difference, but it is. You're talking about, about 18 pounds in difference. So most of the weight savings was probably right here. There are other subtle differences and I'll point these out in the last scene of this video. But now that you've seen the main differences, I want to end this video by discussing some of the challenges you might have if you plan to swap between these two transmissions. So when it comes to swapping, the scenario goes something like this. Maybe you have an 85 California 300 uh, turbo diesel or you have an 86 or an 87 300D and you know it has the 722.4 and You've heard they're a little bit weaker, so you think, oh, I'm going to upgrade to the 722.3. I'm going to put a tougher transmission in my old diesel. Well, let me explain what you're going to run into. Don't get me wrong here. It's doable because this transmission, this 722.4 you see right here, came out of a 1981 W123 turbo diesel. I think the owner put it in because he thought it was a good transmission, didn't have any other options. The first thing you're going to run into is these pipes here. These are the transmission cooler lines that go up to the radiator. Here's the line for a 722.4, and you go to hook it up to the 722.4. And look, the banjo bolt's too big. So you look a little closer and you think, uh-oh. These are different. Look at the diameter of the pipes and then look at the size of the banjo fitting. So if you're going to do the swap, make sure you have the correct oil cooler lines. That's probably number one. And then you're going to run into a problem when you go to wire up the neutral safety switch because the 722.4 has this type of connection. I don't have a 722.3 here, but it's round. It's completely different. And this was a case when I pulled this out of the 81 uh, 300 TD, this had been wired in with some, uh, you know, connectors. Now the bracket for the shift lever is real close to the same. You may have to do some final adjustments. 
The torque converter in the .4 is smaller, but it will line up with your flex plate. So as long as you are aware of these changes, you can go about the swap. You have to decide whether it's worth it, and you want to make sure you have all these extra parts on hand that you're going to need to make the conversion. In closing, I need to issue a warning. Whether you're going to be swapping transmissions or installing another transmission or whether you have the transmission out for some reason, you need to think twice about just putting it back in. You know, 15 years ago, most of the shift problems related to the 722.3 and 722.4 transmission could be traced back to some sort of vacuum issue because the vacuum modulator controls much of the shift quality in these transmissions. I kind of laugh today, you go on these forums, people are still saying, you need to readjust your module. No, adjust it up. No, adjust it down. You can adjust it until the cows come home on these old transmissions. And that's not the problem anymore. The problem now are seals. Number one, seals and B2 pistons. Because guess what happens after 30, 35, 40, even 45 years, guess what happens to all the seals and O-rings? They harden and the transmission start leaking externally. And if you see that, if you see leaks showing up in the outside, it's done. It's probably in great shape mechanically, but it's gonna need resealing because all those O-rings internally and lip seals internally are losing pressure. So you can crank up the modulator pressure, but it's just leaking by all those lip seals. It's leaking by, and, and then that B2 band is binding up. Look at this here. Look at the K2 drum that I just pulled out of this 722.4. You can see right away that the brake band has been rubbing. That means the B2 piston is sticking. So you can watch my other videos on the B2 piston, but I can guarantee you, you know, you're gonna have to deal with this. You can't just take these old transmissions and stick them back in. If you want a reliable, smooth, shifting transmission today, year 2025, you're probably going to need to open these up and change every single seal and O-ring internally and probably the clutch packs as well. So keep that in mind if you want to keep your old bends shifting smoothly down the road.